Ever since that interview I did with Jason DeLine, the voice of Drago, I was hit with a sense of nostalgia of wanting to watch the Bakugan Legacy series, though I'd never had enough time to actually watch it, but now I've sat down and I've watched some of it, and my god, it's as goofy as I remember. By the way, if you haven't checked out my interview with Jason DeLine, I highly recommend it. He is the voice of Drago, and he did come back as Drago for the reboot, and he tells such amazing stories, including how he got the role of Drago in the reboot in the first place. So, definitely recommend going to check it out. It's a pretty cool conversation. So, I thought it would be fun to do a review of the Legacy series for now until Legends comes out. Sit down for a minute because it's going to get a, a really wild. I know this is going to sound weird, but one day my whole world changed. We invented a wicked new game we called Bakugan. So yeah, the episode starts off with like very ominous exposition about Bakugan and how this strange phenomenon of cards started raining down on Earth out of nowhere. You know, I used to watch a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh and sometimes the cards they played seemed like it was pulled out of their asses mid-game. Well, Bakugan seems to already establish that cards don't come out of your butt cheeks. Jesus just craps them out and rains them down upon you. We only knew they were more than just ordinary playing cards. They landed everywhere. Just a second later, we find out these cards have ball creatures inside them, seemingly piling piloting these cards as they fall. The fact that one of them fell into some little girl's bedroom while she was asleep is really sus to me. We are the Bakugan Battle Brawlers! You gotta fight for what's right! Before it's gone! 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 This is Bakugan! This is truly a banger of a theme song. It's as catchy as I remember. It's definitely in the place of Shaman King, Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, and other kind of theme songs from my childhood. Yeah, sure, it sounds a little corny, but it seems purposeful for the sake of impact. But my god, it's as, it's as awesome as I remember. What an amazing opening. It's a timeless classic. Hey, Mom! I'm home! Daniel, I put your lunch in the fridge and please don't forget to wash up. This cartoon starts off so strong already. We don't start with the main character. We start with his mom doing yoga stretches in the living room. I'm really starting to see why people are simping for Dan's mom here all the time. She's a total MILF. Daniel, your lunch is ready and it's getting cold. Then why'd you put it in the fridge? Don't get smart with me, young man. I'm already in love with this dialogue. It's so goofy and no doubt it's because of the translations, but the script writers I think were just having so much fun writing the localizations of it. Anyways, this kid is Dan Cuso, voiced by Scott McCord, an overconfident, carefree kid who only has a passion for one thing, and that is to be the best Bakugan battle brawler. He meets up with Shuji, voiced by Darren Frost, who years later voiced the creature of my nightmares, and the two start a Bakugan brawl. And apparently the brawl happens in a subspace where time freezes in the real world? This is so goofy and nonsensical, but it's so cool at the same time, I just love it. Bakugan! You know, the animations for its time was so fluid and amazing. It's no wonder I enjoyed the show as a kid. The voice acting was awesome, a killer background soundtrack, and awesome monster animations that really drew you into the game. It was definitely this combination of Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon that I really enjoyed watching. This first battle with Shuji that we are seeing with the first episode is only like three minutes into the episode, and they really take their time with it to properly show you the basic mechanics of the game without having to dump exposition and explanations of how to play. Man, you should have seen me. I was like totally wicked. Now we get this scene that gives us a small introduction to the other main heroes, and I like how this was done by Skype Call. Runo, voiced by Julie Lemix, is a sassy, too mature girl with attitude. Julie, voiced by Katie Griffin, is a ditzy girl crushing on Dan. I'm a battle brawler, I'm not your boyfriend. Marujo, voiced by Cameron Ansel, I think he's the smart one? Alice, voiced by Emily Claire Barlow, a gentle sweet girl who definitely was not my waifu growing up. And Shun Kazami, voiced by Zachary Bennett, a calm cold boar brawler who is the number one ranked brawler in the world that Dan wants to beat. Overall, the friendship dynamic is very unique. This seems to be a long distance group friendship since all of them live in different parts of the world, and I feel that one of the strengths that Bakugan really has is protecting the expansion of the online community, and therefore connect more with the viewers. If only the human they call Dan could understand that Bakugan is not just a game. Naga, wait! Oh, well, meanwhile on Vestroya, Dragonoid, voiced by Jason DeLine, is trying to stop Naga, voiced by John Stalker, from gaining power, and he name drops Michael. Whoever that is. Naga escapes, Shuji and Dan have a rematch where Shuji switches his element to Darkest Bakugan because he's apparently not Master of Saptera anymore, but he's instead... Master of Darkest! 
Give me a break. If I'm gonna call you anything, it's loser. Ooh. Emotional damage. So Naga finds the infinite and silent core, but gets sucked into the silent core to some goofy dialogue. Too much. Too much. No. Not enough positive energy. Out of control. And it rips the dimensions apart, causing Fear Ripper and Dragonoid to clash and fall into the middle of Shuji and Dan's game. After Drago uses Boosted Dragon, apparently that means Dan beats Shuji. Yeah, I'm confused. And the episode ends with Dan telling his friends that he thought he heard Drago talking. And to his surprise, he wasn't the only one who heard his Bakugan talking, as other kids over the internet is spamming the Bakugan message boards saying the same thing. Maybe the Bakugan world has more to it than we thought. Coming up on Bakugan Battle Brawlers, wait until you see what happens when the brawlers battle Masquerade and Reaper. Yeah, this was something I wish that the reboot did when the Legacy series did well, which was giving small sneak previews at the end of the episode, which will hype you up for the next episode. I really wish that the reboot had done that as well. But overall, it's, it's as great as I remember it, and I wouldn't be opposed to watching some more of it in the future. But for now, I'm going to give this first episode a Bakutastic. This was a pretty good first episode, and uh, it's as goofy and as amazing as I remember it. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Support Bakutak by pressing the thumbs up, and give us a subscribe for more awesome Bakugan content. I've been Haru Ren, and thank God for Rapid Fire. Bye!